Oh, so Nisha, do you have a favourite Adam Sandler role? Um. That's the correct answer. <laughs> the correct answer is, uh, has he got good movies? No, not really. It's arguable that one of the worst things that can happen to an actor is to be typecast. In addition to limiting the amount of roles they may be offered, it can also result in them being forever synonymous with a character they played many years ago. Something I don't think the actor Christopher McDonald minds all that much, given that the character he's most often associated with has resulted in playing his favourite hobby for free. Golf. Okay, I don't have a picture of this guy, so would you please remind me of who he plays? Well, he plays Shooter McGavin in the film Happy Gilmore, which I would argue is probably one of Adam Sandler's better films. Would yeah, you? Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Because like, the writing in it's really tight and like, the jokes are good. It doesn't overstate its welcome. Adam yeah. Sandler's character's not that much of an asshole. Yeah, it made me laugh. Yeah. Like, it, would it surprise you to find out as well that the entire script was rewritten by a better comedian? <laughs> so I found this out of thought. It's like, why is Happy Gilmore, of all of Adam Sandler's films from that era, just so much tighter? in terms of the script and like, you know, the, the pacing and the jokes are really good, yeah. which you don't really often associate with Adam Sandler films. Oh, Judd Apatow rewrote the entire script uncredited. And I found this out oddly enough, thanks to an interview with Christopher McDonald, who revealed that the best joke in the film was like, you know, Apatow's contribution. Anisha, you probably know what that joke is, so would you like to repeat it for the audience at home? I'm gonna assume it's you eat pieces of shit for breakfast. Yes. You're in big trouble though, pal. I eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. You eat pieces of shit for breakfast? No. And that scene, to me, is just a masterclass in comedic delivery and timing because just McDonald's just responsive, no. It's just, <laughs> he waits just long enough for it to be like maximum hilariousness. And according to McDonald, that was his favorite line in the film because he just got to proper ham it up for the, no. <laughs> no. Shooter McGavin, he's the film's antagonist. He is, yeah, which is weird because there's also the, like Ben Stiller's character who never gets his comeuppance despite being I'd arguably a bigger asshole than Shooter McGavin. Could I trouble you for a glass of warm milk? It helps put me to sleep. You could trouble me for a warm glass of shut the hell up. And this is probably something that the comments are screaming about. Like, did you know like, there is a deleted scene where that character gets thrown out of a window that they cut out of the movie for time? Because like, Happy finds out that his grandma was being mistreated by that guy yeah. and throws him out of a window. Bottom line is, your grandmother is senile. <laughs> they cut it for time, so that character in the film as it exists now never gets his comeuppance. Yeah. Which is really weird considering, like, you know, he's an asshole to Happy's grandma, and Happy's whole thing is that I'm doing this for my grandma, but the guy who's, like, mentally... Like, you know, abusing her in a care home just gets away scot-free. Like, yeah, you don't see him, like, the last half of the film, you don't really see he him. He disappears, yeah. Because they cut out that scene of Happy seeing him be a dick and throw him out a window. Oh. But the comments are already talking about it right now. Yeah. You can tell. Even though we've mentioned it right now, the first time we bring him up, we immediately mention that deleted scene. Someone's already gone, do you know there's a deleted scene? And now, because I've said that, there's no people going, do you know there's a deleted scene? Ironically, because that's funny. Right, so Christopher McDonald. Yes. How did he get the role of Shooter McGavin? Did he audition for it? He, he didn't audition at all. In fact, the role was offered to him several times and he turned it down several times because according to him, he didn't want to be typecast as an asshole, which is fair enough. Like, yeah. you can't argue that's like, yeah. yeah, I keep getting cast to play villains in movies and I don't really want to keep doing that because then I'll get typecast as a villain and that's probably not going to be good for my career. Yeah. And according to him, he changed his mind, though, when he was at, like, a, a golf tournament, which he won, and uh, realised, wow, it's, golf's pretty fun. I like golf. And he's wrong with that. Yeah, uh, what was that Adam Sandler movie about again? Oh, it's about golf. Oh, and who do I play? Oh, you, the, the main villain. Oh, so I get a couple million dollars to play golf. That actually sounds pretty sick. Give Adam a call. <laughs> and he, go on, he met up and he went, oh, this film's pretty great. Yeah, well, I'll be in it. I'll get paid a million dollars to play just golf. Basically being, being paid to do what you enjoy, <laughs> which is thing. the best he, thing. Yeah, he paid to do the weekend before. If he enjoys playing golf, surely he'd be quite good at it. Even, yeah. even to be hired in the role of playing golf as well. You'd think so, wouldn't you? And he did win that tournament that, that like, inspired him to accept the role of shooting McGowan. But according to McDonald, he was like, I wasn't that great at golf, or at least not good enough to convincingly play a seasoned golf pro. So what happened was they brought in a golf expert to train him on set. And according to McDonald's, it was the best thing ever. I got, I got to play golf for free. 
I got trained by a pro, and by the end of it, my golf game was, and I quote, sick. <laughs> and he says, like, yeah, I'm, I got so good at golf. My golf game was amazing by the end of shooting because I was playing golf every single day. And a bit of behind the scenes trivia that I quite like, that McDonald's really proud of, is Joe the shot. McDonald actually did that and he's super proud of it and he's like, yeah, it was so good. You know how I hate in a, in a golf movie where they cut to the hole and the ball rolls in? I want to say, could you please let me make it? It's about a 32 footer. When I put that baby in there and I did it, choke on that baby. And I just you know, did that whole shooter shimmy thing at the <laughs> That's end. Amazing. That's the one they left in the movie. <laughs> so in the same vein as McDonald, just nailing that putt, is there anything cool you've done while playing sports you'd like to share with the audience at home? Well, I'm not the most sportiest of people. Oh, so. same. <laughs> I hate sports. So I'm not that great, but um, there's been moments where I've been playing badminton. Oh yeah, you? Just out of nowhere. Like, me and Nisha and Adam, we all play badminton together every now and again. And then just out of nowhere, Nisha was like, oh, like the, the shuttlecock's halfway because Cotton is like, ding! Like, yeah, I'll miss really easy shots. And then the next minute I'll hit like this shot that comes flying at yeah, me without just, even looking at it sometimes. I'm just uh, like, <gasps> you like the instinctive one that you did where it was like, just fl like it got smashed towards you and just went, ding! <laughs> And then everyone did the Chris Pratt face, just the, and we just saw it. The only cool thing I could do is I taught myself to um, uh, shoot pool behind my back. Oh, that's cool. Which I think you've seen me do when we play pool. And then the other one is uh, when I bowl. Um, I taught myself to bowl when you hold the ball wrong and do the proper big swerve. So you play, oh, no, they did that. <laughs> when you can, like, you can bowl it like a discus at the bowling ball, it goes, whoa, 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 and spins in. But I'm not really good at that. Okay, bringing it back to Christopher McDonald. Yes. Because he was typecast as Shooter McGavin. Pretty much, yeah. He's admitted that everyone I meet knows me as Shooter McGavin. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty hard, like, in a lot of films or soaps even, if, you're, if you get typecast as a villain, people obviously can't see you as anything else. Yeah, and they don't like that. And we've spoke before on the channel, so we won't, like, you know, just retread old ground that we've covered before. But I think uh, McDonald has a really healthy attitude towards this, where he's only recognised for one role, where some actors might resent that. And he says, well, yeah, it's, I guess it's sometimes it's a little bit annoying where, you know, we're out with your family or whatever and people are asking me to call them a piece of shit. That gets a bit annoying. But I, I think it'd be worse if I told people I was an actor and they didn't recognise anything I've been in. Which I think is, a, you know, that's the really good way of putting it where what's worse that I tell people I'm an actor and they go, oh yeah, you're Shoot McGavin. Or I say, I'm an actor and they go, well, what have you been in? So I think, yeah, he's got a really good, like, healthy attitude towards that. And he said, because of my association with Shoot McGavin, I've never had to pay for a round of golf my entire life since that day. Like the day, from the day it aired, I've never had to pay for golf ever. Because I, like, I walk onto a golf course and just people clamber over themselves to pay for my game because they want to play with Shoot McGavin. And in addition to that, something else he's noted happens a lot because of his association with that role is that a lot of people come up to him and ask him to sign autographs, but they always ask him to sign, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that, to me, is just amazing. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I play golf for free and people pay me to call them a piece of shit. What a hero. So when I researched this article, I looked up Christopher McDonald, so I was curious, and the guy is a fucking worker. He's, like, he's been in tons of movies. He's been working consistently for like, the past 30 fucking years. Like, the guy... He's just, he's just out there, but I still see him as shooting McGavin, and as we might just discussed, like he doesn't mind that, because obviously at least we recognise him from something. So in that vein, are there any actors that you just know as one person? Well, Daniel Radcliffe. As Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> or as uh, Frodo. Are you familiar with that story? Um, I think so. Yeah, fun fact, uh, Elijah Wood and Daniel Radcliffe get mistaken for each other all the time. Yeah, yeah, I do, because I think I did it in one of the focus videos, actually. Oh, you, right, where well, you you've merged the face together and you can see it. I think it was like they're just a comparison. They look so similar. They're very, very similar. And according to Elijah Wood, yeah, I'll just sign um, autographs as Daniel and he does the same. And then apparently Toby Maguire gets mistaken for both of them. Yeah, yeah. And they all have a triple pact where they all will sign each like, autographs as each other just to avoid the embarrassment for the fan who recognises them. <laughs> So that's a good one, right? In the same, I think R Rupert Grint, maybe. Like, he'll never escape that because he's the ginger kid from Harry Potter. So any movie he's going to be in, he's going to be the ginger kid. I mean, anyone, any of the kids in Harry Potter series, like Emma Watson. Yeah. Probably no one else but Hermione. No, didn't she play at Belle? Yeah, in but I still Beauty see her as Hermione. <laughs> she played Belle in Beauty and the Beast. And she had, was it a really bad dress that like, there was cosplayers who had a better version of Belle's dress? I liked it. 
That is, that's just my thing. opinion. They're just like, oh man, that dress looks so bad. And also, she's got like no on screen presence or charisma. So she's just like this wet fucking towel of an actress who's like, she's a solid actress, but she can't carry a movie on her own. Uh, it made me laugh when uh, people, when the beast turned into a human, people preferred the beast. Like, you said, <laughs> the, the beast was more handsome than the man. The beast is more handsome than the guy. Oh, that's fucking rough, is that one? <laughs> well, the thing is, though, like, speaking about, you know, werewolf beast people, like, Edward Cullen, like, Robert. Patterson, he's in Harry Potter. He's Cedric he Diggory. Yeah, and I he like is. the theory that it's Harry Potter's fault that he's a vampire because he got <laughs> because he died in the like, in that tournament. And then he got bitten by a vampire on his way out. <laughs> and, like, it's been the like, vampire to me. It's the Wesley Snipes. I just see he's just Blade, and the fact that he's constantly on Twitter like hashtag Make America Blade again. <laughs> and Lucas, you're gonna have to help me with this one. Who's the new guy playing Blade? So you can pronounce his name. Is it Maharash Ali. Is that how you pronounce it? We'll go with that. Okay, yeah. Well, that guy, he's now Blade, and apparently Wesley Snipes is super pissed, and now I'm Blade. So you are. You are Blade. Yeah. But we've got a new Blade. We've got a better Blade. Cool Blade. 